Welcome back, Mongo Fix. Well, Mongo back working on this old bench grinder. You remember we cleaned it all up. Link in the description below. Yeah, she's still working. Spins up speed real good. But Mongo got a new problem. So I was using it pretty heavy the other day, and that, boy, she got so hot to the touch, you'll burn your fingers off. You gotta open this up and check it out, because something wrong. Always gotta be sure, unplug the machine before you work on it. Couple different things could cause overheating. Bad motor, a bad capacitor, and bad bearings. We know the bearings in this one good, but Mongo never actually tested the capacitor, so we're gonna take that off. Undo our wires. And we'll take our hold down nut off. And we'll slide this guy out. Best way to test the capacitor is with a digital ohm meter. Couple different tests to do. So we'll start by putting it on ohms and just touching the top two tabs. We're getting about two ohms on there. That right away tell Mongo that capacitor junk. What should happen is the resistance should fluctuate. Push this little button on this meter to get the capacitance. And you'll see this is OL. Normally this is where you'd read like 10 millifarad, 400 millifarad, 40 millifarad, or whatever. That's how you get that reading. This little symbol here is the capacitor test, or capacitance test. Mongo's theory is that because this read two ohms across the capacitor, that kind of like having a really small resistor connected in series with the motor windings causing too much current draw overheating the motor We're gonna go ahead and test all the motor windings just to check them out so this motor's got three wire leads coming off some of these are labeled there's a eight on that one a one on that one and this one doesn't have any number on the label so to test this since there are three three leads coming off you'll put your meter on resistance and you'll touch two leads, and you get 24.8 ohms. Then you'll move one of the leads to that third one. We get 1.5 ohms, and then we got one more to test. So you move your other lead back to here, and you get 23.6 ohms. Every motor measures differently, depends on the windings inside the motor. There's probably a start winding or a main winding and an auxiliary winding. These windings, they could be, you know, super long coils. They could be short and just a couple coils. So your resistance measurement will depend on the motor. Mongo draw up just a little schematic to try to help to show what we did. So these are our main lines coming in. We have a main power or the line. We have a neutral and we have a ground. This comes from the outlet. So when it comes into the grinder, goes up to a switch, that switch splits off into two different coils. Both coils are connected via the capacitor, and one of those coils is also connected to the neutral. So we measured from the switch to the coil end that's connected to the neutral, we measured 1.4 ohms. From the switch, to the other side, the other coil, on the opposite side of the capacitor, we measured 23 ohms. And then when we measured from both leads that go to the capacitor, 24.2. What should happen, kind of like you see, is that you should have the resistance of one coil, the resistance of the second coil, and your third measurement is both of those resistance added together. And we kind of have that here. so. Not sure if the motor windings are good or not, but they make sense. One thing to note, this type of motor is known as a split phase AC motor. A couple different type of split phase motors. This one though, there's no centrifugal switch inside the motor that disables the capacitor. This motor, the capacitor is permanently connected to the circuit. It's known as a PSC. So what that means is both of these coils are always energized 
during operation. The capacitor joins between these two and then the one connects to the neutral. So what the capacitor does is it splits the phase. Houses in the U.S. only have single phase. They're one phase, that's it. The more phases you have on an electric motor, the more efficient and better it'll work. So when that capacitor is wired in, it splits into a second phase. Now there's two phases on this one motor, and the capacitor causes a 90 degree phase shift. So with a shorted capacitor, or a capacitor that's reading two ohms in it, and doesn't have any capacitance, most likely that circuit is still there, still energized, but it's probably drawing way too much current. Mongo not super sure on the inside what the result happens on the motor. Maybe the magnetic fields fight each other, don't know. Now normally, capacitors have some sort of label on them that tell you, hey, this is 10 millifarad, and it's, you know, 200 volt, or whatever. This one has nothing. So that should be interesting to try to find a capacitor to replace. Now this is a capacitor from a different bench grinder. You'll see video of that one later. On the back here, it shows uh, the brand, Mallory, and it is a 5 MFD, so 5 millifarad, uh, 330 volt, and it got a part number. Pretty good chance this electric motor requires a very similar capacitor. Not sure if the same one. Get this capacitor in, get her plugged in, let's see. Yeah, sure enough, it still runs. You have to leave her running for a long time to see if it still heats up. Now, of course, that capacitor's been charged now, so we gotta discharge it. You can do that with a metal screwdriver like this, touch the two leads. You can also do it with your voltmeter on resistance. Touch the two leads. This is what an ohm meter is supposed to do when it's on a capacitor. See, it's cycling resistance like that. And then if you hit the capacitor setting, 5.5 millifarad. Run up to the Ace hardware, pick up a capacitor. They didn't have a 5 millifarad they had a 7.5 so since bongo not really sure what this one was to begin with just assuming similar to the other so i'll go with the 7.5 let's see if it worked this was only 10 buck at ace hardware so a nice brand new cap resistance doing its thing yep capacitance 7.55 and we'll check for short to the case that oh well oh well she good and it should be a brand new well let's get her in there she's a little loose in there yeah just a little something extra for it to grip to Time to see if it runs. Of course it seemed to run good the other time. So we'll finish putting her back together. The true test will be whether or not this thing gets burned the flesh hot while it's running. So Mongo got a nice little trailer ball we're going to try to polish up. Well, get the rust off, not really polish it shiny. And we'll see how hot she gets. Mongo pushing pretty hard on there, trying to make a worst case scenario, get that motor as hot as possible. Motor speed trying to slow down, but not really when pushing really hard. Does that mean capacitor working? Not letting the motor slow down. So shiny! Check out the motor here. Oh, not even warm. 
Well, Mongo figure find some more stuff. Do a longer test on this thing. She ain't even warming up yet, so. This is an old steering wheel from a really old do-it-yourself go-kart. That's a pretty big difference. Oh, she's just getting warm. Leave your hand on that all day. She's just getting warm. Yeah, so Mongo say that that capacitor definitely was what was causing this bench grinder to overheat. Seemed like 7.5. It's running the machine pretty good. Pushed on the wheels real hard. And the motor slowed only slightly but maintained the torque to keep it going. Mongo pretty happy with this performance because last time Mongo would not be able to put his hand up here. Well, hopefully this video will help you if you ever have a bench grinder or something that's overheating, getting way too hot. You know, they will get warm when they're under use. It's, you know, depending on what you're grinding and buffing and while you're wheeling, there's a lot of energy getting used there. So they will get warm, but they should never be burn your flesh hot. So hopefully this video will help you if you have a similar problem. If you like this video, be sure to like this video. If you like this video and other videos from Mongo Fix, be sure to subscribe. Mongo is working on all sorts of junk. Mongo, thank you.